it's it's weird because when you get time, like you know you gotta do it, but you really don't know how. Yeah. It's like you just see like this blank, this big gap in your mind yeah. of like things that you gotta fill up. Like this is six, seven, ten, twenty years, but I don't know how and you know. Yeah. So um I'm not gonna lie, that was probably the first time I cried during incarceration because I'm running around, I'm fighting it, and I'm I'm getting good news and I'm getting bad news, but I always had hope. Like I'm spank this or I'm yeah. But once you finally get that final decision, it's like, oh shit. So, all of the gimmicks is gone, all of the, yo, I swear it wasn't me, and I gotta stand on it now. And it was like, fuck. Um, and that day came, um, it came in uh, July, right? On like probably the uh, second and a half year of me fighting the case. My mom never missed a court date. And my mom was sitting in the courtroom, and the judge had told me, uh, listen, we ready for trial. I'm dragging this on for over two years, the people ready. Today, last fine warfare. It started at like 15. You know, they were scaring me at first, and they kept going down. Final warfare that day was eight years. I'm saying he said, I offer you eight years, <clears throat> or we going to trial, right? So he gave, said, I give you two minutes to think about it. But he said, if and when you do blow trial, trust me, that number will double. And who you had, Judge Fish? He told I me Judge the Joker, because yeah. he, he had no mercy on me. He basically said, if and when you blow trial, and that has to be on record. So yeah. it was almost biased for you to even tell me I was going to blow trial. Like, that's almost yeah. like pre tip. It was crazy, man. So I turn around, my mom's crying. She had one of those things on. Like, she, um, she's a, a church. Uh, she's the minister, but she always keeps like a scarf wrapped right. around her, right? Mm -hmm. And I see her like wiping her eyes with it. And I just looked at her and she just like nodded her head. And that was like the confirmation, like the fight is over. Like don't play with them. Yeah. And that's when like my, my everything dropped. Like my heart dropped because it was like, I gotta really do it now. Right. Once mommy hit that green light, it was yeah. no more talking. It was like, all right. And I looked at my lawyer, I just gave him a thumbs up. And I promise you, um, the day I got sentenced, the, the judge told me because you didn't waste our time, I'm gonna take a year off. Mm -hmm. One day in prison that you ain't got to do mm -hmm. is a lifetime. For yeah. him to take out a whole bullet was yeah. like, oh, shit. I didn't realize the significance of it until the bit was over, but I'm like, yo, to, to still mm -hmm. have that, nothing that's happening right now would be happening for me if I would have kept that extra year. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I would have came home at the wrong time. Everything would just be off. Nothing would have aligned to this. Right. right, so like that that moment was crucial okay. in all of this working. Absolutely. That judge just having that legacy right there and there was like, you know what, I'm gonna take back one. Right. And yeah, but after that, I took the time, I went back into that holding cell. I was in um in the tombs at the time, Manhattan court. And when they finally closed that gate this time, it was a different mm -hmm. head. Like it sounded yeah. different this uh -huh. time. Like, and I was like, oh shit, it's yeah. real now. Right. And for right. somebody that never been up north, that fear of the unknown is crazy. Like it literally feels like you're about to be thrown in some habitat of the unknown with lions, tigers, and bears, and you gotta fight your way out this jungle, man.